Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about how to use cloud storage services to manage your important files for your organization, for your business. These could be Excel files, Word documents, PDFs, anything that you have that you want to store and uh, access for multiple devices and keep safe. So to start off, we're going to look at just a few of the benefits of using cloud storage to uh, save your files. First off, you can access files from any device. So uh, any of the services that you would look at today, they allow you to access from desktops, laptops, mobile devices, uh, any device that you have, you'd be able to access your files. You'll be able to increase your productivity because you're able to work on your files wherever you are with whatever device you have. So you don't have to wait till you get back to the office or to your home or wherever it is you typically would do your work. You can work on things wherever you are with your mobile phone, with an iPad, with whatever devices you have. You can also easily share files with others. Uh, so if you're working on a file with a partner or with one of your employees, be able to, to easily share out files and have others uh, view, edit, change uh, the documents that you're working on. Protection against losing files is another one of these benefits. When I show you a little bit more about how these systems actually work, you'll see this benefit in that you'll have files stored in multiple locations so that if your computer breaks, you don't actually lose all your files. Uh, and then the last thing, easy transition to a new or a different computer. So uh, if your computer breaks or maybe business is good and you've bought a, a new computer that's bigger, better, faster, it makes it very easy for you to move your files from your old computer to your new computer when you have them stored uh, in a cloud service. So looking at the options that you have. There's a lot of services out there. These are some of the bigger ones that you've probably heard of uh, most, if not all of these. OneDrive, Dropbox, iCloud, Box, and Google Drive are some examples. There are a lot more options than this that are out there. Uh, we're not going to talk about that today as far as pros and cons of each of these services. There's a lot of good information out there that you can find. Uh, we'll be focused more on how to get the most out of, uh, out of a service. And we'll, we'll talk about Dropbox in particular for this demo, but understand that any of these services that you use, they're all going to offer very similar functionality and benefits. So when we look at these services, you'll see uh, they have web interfaces or websites that you can come to and log into and see all of your files. You can uh, come here to manage those files. You can upload new files, delete files. Uh, you can also share things with folks, uh, either folders or individual files. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, functionality here. Uh, you can see share, download, I can star things to, to mark them as a, a favorites, rename, move, copy and delete. Uh, so I can come in here and edit these. You'll see this is a folder. If I click on it, it opens up into that folder and uh, shows me additional files that are there. Uh, you'll see that I can uh, share files and folders uh, and uh, it's a pretty clean interface, nothing super fancy to it, and again, if you're using something other than Dropbox, they're all going to look uh, about the same uh, through, through that web interface. So the second way that you can access these services is through applications that you install on your PC or Mac. Uh, in this case, you'll see we've got Dropbox installed, and the way that it appears is as a folder on my computer. And you see here are these additional folders that sit in my Dropbox account. You can see these same files. These are the exact same as they appear on the website. So I'm able to just save files, delete files, edit files right off of my computer, uh, just as if they were saved on my hard drive on that computer. Uh, so you don't have to go to websites and upload things. It, uh, it's, it's very convenient to 
just save things into this Dropbox folder and then those things will sync automatically with my account and be stored on the Dropbox servers. So the third way you can use these services is through mobile devices. You'll see here on my iPhone I've got a Dropbox application installed. Uh, they've got applications for Android devices as well, uh, phones, tablets, uh, and, and these applications will allow you to connect into your exact same Dropbox account. So I can open this up and you'll see these are the same files that you saw on the website and on my hard drive. Uh, I can come and access them here on my phone and do a lot of the same things. I can delete them, move them around, uh, I can share them out, um, I can save things like photos uh, into my uh, Dropbox account uh, and use the mobile phone to uh, to manage files here. Uh, you'll also see that uh, many applications on mobile devices have integrations with these services. So for example, I could open up Microsoft Word on my phone and I can open, edit, and save Word files that are stored in my Dropbox account directly on my mobile device. So this is something that for me, I use this a lot. I take a train into uh, the city a lot and uh, sometimes it's crowded. I'm not able to pull out my laptop and make use of lots of space around me because I just don't have it. But what I am able to do is pull out my mobile phone and access a document that I've been working on and make some edits and, and continue working on it uh, in a very tight space uh, on my mobile device. And I also don't need to worry about how do I get this Word document off of my PC, which is Windows based, onto my mobile phone, which is a, an iPhone. How do I edit it there and then save it back? It, the, the applications do all that for me, so very easy to uh, open those documents and edit those. So let's take a look at a real example here. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to talk about Dropbox, but this really is the, the way that all of these services work. They're pretty much the same. There's not really a lot of differences that you would notice when you're using them. Uh, but let's say I'm working on my PC uh, or my Mac, and I've created a document, and I save that document into my Dropbox folder. Now, what's going to happen is the Dropbox folder picks that up, the application, and it pushes that document over to Dropbox's server. So now that a document actually exists in two places, it exists locally on my PC and it also exists on that Dropbox server. So then let's say a day later I log in either through my mobile device or through my laptop. I'm out on the road uh, and I want to work on my file again. So this assumes that I've got Dropbox already installed on my laptop and uh, on my mobile phone. So when I turn that laptop on, when I turn that phone on, the Dropbox application on those devices is going to automatically sync to that Dropbox server and say, hey, there's a new document here. And in doing so, it's going to pull that document down to my device. So now I've got the file on my laptop. I can work on it there. And when I save it, it'll go back and sync to the file that's on that Dropbox server. And so with all my devices here, anytime I log into them, it's going to go to the Dropbox server and say, hey, do you have any new files for me? And if it finds new files, it'll automatically pull those down and put those on your device that you're using uh, to access your account. So you've always got the latest file, the latest version on any device, uh, no matter when you access it and when you use it. Now one thing to note here is you do have the potential to create conflicts. So as an example, say I was working on my PC and somebody else was on the laptop accessing the same document. There's a chance that we could create conflicting versions of the same document. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on how that works. Uh, or what the tools are to fix that, but know that Dropbox has tools to help you manage those conflicts and figure out which document is the, the correct or most current document. So let's take a look at some do's and don'ts to 
get the most out of using cloud storage for your documents. First thing, store documents that you want to be able to access from multiple locations. So when you think about the files that you're working on, anything that's going to take you more than one session where you're sitting down and working on it and you know that you're not going to get finished and you might want to pick it up tomorrow but you might not be in your office those are the types of things that you would want to consider storing uh, in a, a cloud storage system like Dropbox. Another thing you might want to do is think about documents or files that you might want to work on when all you've got is your mobile device. So I gave the example earlier that I take a train into the city sometimes and when I'm on that train it's pretty crowded I can't pull out a laptop I'll use my mobile device to continue working on a document so I can gain a little bit more time working on the the things that I'm working on and so I would think about what are the documents that I would want to be able to access from my iPhone and make sure that those documents get saved in Dropbox. So a third thing to think about is using cloud storage to store critical files that you want to make sure you don't get lost. When I went over how the system works, if you remember that drawing, you saw that the file ends up being stored in four different locations if you've accessed it from different devices. And so what that does for you is if your PC breaks, or your hard drive breaks, you're actually not going to lose any of those files that you have stored in cloud services because Dropbox still has a copy of that file. And so it allows you to protect critical files. So for example, for me personally, I have my tax return files that I've done in the past. Those are all saved on my Dropbox account because I don't want to lose those files. I know that they're there. If something happens to my PC, I'll still have those files sitting in that Dropbox account. And then we have a don't listed here. You want to avoid using cloud storage for large files like photos and videos unless you have a specific plan that's designed to store those large file types. So uh, a lot of the plans that either are free uh, or even the some of the plans that you pay for they're great and and more than adequate for storing things like word documents and reasonably sized excel files pdfs those types of things photos and videos will eat up that space very quickly uh, and if you don't have a plan that's specifically geared towards large file sizes uh, you will very quickly run out of space and not be able to store any more documents so uh, there are plans out there that are specific to uh, photos and videos and just make sure that you have one of those before you start dumping all of your vacation photos uh, and fill up all of your your storage uh, with with photos and, and videos before we finish up, I want to touch briefly on security. So this is a common concern that folks have when we talk about starting to store critical documents or important business information on a cloud service. Uh, so you're not alone in having those concerns uh, and, and being worried about what might happen to your files. But one thing to think about is that for all of these cloud services, security and trust are critical to them doing business. Uh, and so they invest significant time and money in making sure that their services are secure uh, and that you can trust them. If that trust was breached, they would go out of business. Um, if, if Dropbox had major security problems and they were constantly losing files or people were accessing their files and sharing sensitive information, uh, they wouldn't be in business very long. So it's mission critical for them to invest in security and preventative measures so that your files are as safe as they can be. Thanks for taking the time today to watch this video. 
you have any further questions or concerns about what you've seen today, feel free to reach out to us directly at contact us at beelinetechgroup.com. Give us a like down below, add your comments, and let us know what we can do to better help you understand uh, how to be more productive using cloud storage services to help manage your important files.